friends. Happy Wine Town Wednesday. I'm so glad you're here with us this evening. Find some place cozy to sit and we will get started. This evening we're going to listen to two stories. The first story I'm very excited about reading to you and the reason why I feel so excited about reading this story to you is because we were having a class discussion on the rug in class the other day and one of you, after I read this story to the class, suggested that I read it for Wine Down Wednesday. And hearing that feedback from this student filled my bucket all the way up. And many of you agreed with this student that we should read this story. Do you remember the title of the story? It is, We're Going on a Bear Hunt by Michael Rosen and Helen Oxenbury. You can read along with me. There's a lot of repetition in this story. That means that certain text is repeated. We're going on a bear hunt. For Geraldine, Joe, Naomi, Eddie, Laura, and Isaac, and for Amelia. Connection if your name is Amelia. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh, grass. Long, wavy grass. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh, no. We're going to go through it. We're, we've got to go through it. I want to strive for accuracy. That's why I track with my finger. Swishy swashy, swishy swashy, swishy swashy. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh, a river, a deep cold river. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we've got to go through it. Splash, 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 splash. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh. Mud, thick, oozy mud. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we've got to go through it. Squelch, squirch, squelch, squirch, squelch, squirch. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh, a forest, a big, dark forest. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh, no, we've got to go through it. Stumble trip, stumble trip, stumble trip. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh, a snowstorm, a swirling, whirling snowstorm. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh, no. We've got to go through it. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Oh, oh, a cave. A narrow, gloomy.
gloomy key. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh, no. We've got to go through it. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. What's that? I wonder what it is. <gasps> One shiny, wet nose. Two big, furry ears. Two big, goggly eyes. It's a bear! Quick, back through the cave. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Back through the snowstorm. Stumble trip, stumble trip, stumble trip. Back through the mud. Squelch, squirch, squelch, squirch. Back through the river. Splash, 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 splash. Back through the grass. Squishy, squashy, squishy, squashy. Get to our front door. Open the door. Up the stairs. Oh no, we forgot to shut the door. Back downstairs. Shut the door. Back upstairs, into the bedroom, into bed, under the covers. We're not going on a bear hunt again. The end. Ooh, here's a fun fact. Michael Rosen who is the author of this book, has been writing for children since 1970. He lives in London with his wife and five children. I'm so glad we got to read this story together, especially because a student in class gave feedback about wanting to hear this for Wind Down Wednesday. In addition to this story, we're going to listen to one of my favorite stories. And we did hear this story read to us earlier in the school year. And I'm excited to read it to you again. It was originally read to us by a woman in our school district who is the director of human resources. We invited her into our classroom and she read this story to us. It was her favorite story when she was a child and it's also mine. This woman hired me so that I get to teach you every day. The story is Ira Sleeps Over by Bernard Weber. Ira sleeps over. For Mark, Wendy, and Amy, I was invited to sleep at Reggie's house. Was I happy? I had never slept at a friend's house before. But I had a problem. It began when my sister said, are you taking your teddy bear along? Taking my teddy bear along, I said, to my friend's house? Are you kidding? That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Of course I'm not taking my teddy bear. And then she said, But you never slept without your teddy bear before. How will you feel sleeping without your teddy bear for the very first time? Hmm? I'll feel fine. I'll feel great. I will probably love sleeping without my teddy bear. Just don't worry about it, I said. Who's worried, she said. But now, she had me thinking about it. Now she really had me thinking about it. I began to wonder, suppose I won't like sleeping without my teddy bear. Suppose I just hate sleeping without my teddy bear. Should I take him? Take him, said my mother. Take him, said my father. But Reggie will laugh, I said. He'll say I'm a baby. He won't laugh, said my mother. He won't laugh, said my father. 
He'll laugh, said my sister. Is she listening with understanding and empathy to how Reggie is feeling? What would you say if Reggie told you that he was thinking about bringing a teddy bear to a sleepover? I decided not to take my teddy bear. That afternoon, I played with Reggie. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm calling him Reggie. We have to keep reading to find out what his name is. Reggie is the name of the friend's house that he's going to. That afternoon, I played with Reggie. Reggie had plans, big plans tonight, he said. When you come to my house, we are going to have fun, fun, fun. First, I'll show you my junk collection. And after that, we'll have a wrestling match. And after that, a pillow fight. And after that, we'll do magic tricks. And after that, we'll play checkers. And after that, we'll play dominoes. And after that, we can fool around with my magnifying glass. Great, I said. I can hardly wait. By the way, I asked, what do you think of teddy bears? But Reggie just went on talking and planning as if he had never heard of teddy bears. And after that, he said, do you know what we can do after that? I mean, when the lights are out and the house is really dark, guess what we can do? What? I asked. We can tell ghost stories. Ghost stories, I said. Ghost stories, said Reggie. Scary, creepy, spooky ghost stories. I began to think about my teddy bear. Do you have something that you think about when you need to be comforted? He likes thinking about his teddy bear. Does your house get very dark? I asked. Uh-huh, said Reggie. Very, very dark? Uh-huh, said Reggie. By the way, I said again, what do you think of teddy bears? Suddenly, Reggie was in a big hurry to go someplace. See you tonight, he said. See you, I said. I decided to take my teddy bear. Good, said my mother. Good, said my father. But my sister said, what do you think his sister said? What if Reggie wants to know your teddy bear's name? Did you think about that? And did you think about how he will laugh and say Tata is a silly baby name, even for a teddy bear? He won't ask, I said. He'll ask, she said. I decided not to take my teddy bear. I wonder if he will be a leader and decide what's best for him. At last, it was time to go to Reggie's house. Good night, said my mother. Good night, said my father. Sleep tight, said my sister. I went next door where Reggie lived. This is one of my favorite pages. I remember the story being read to me and I loved how all he had to do was hop over the fence to get to his friend's house. Oh, and this was another one of my favorite pages. That night, Reggie showed me his junk. He showed me his flashlight, his collection of bottle caps, a chain made of chewing gum wrappers, some picture postcards, an egg timer, jumbo goggles, a false nose and mustache, and a bunch of old rubber stamps and labels from his father's office. We decided to play office with the rubber stamps. After that, we had a wrestling match. And after that, we had a pillow fight. And after that, Reggie's father said, what do you think Reggie's father said? Bedtime. Already, said Reggie. Already, said his father. We got into bed. Good night, 
said Reggie's father. Good night, he said. Reggie sighed. I sighed. We can still tell ghost stories, said Reggie. Do you know any, I asked. Uh-huh, said Reggie. Reggie began to tell a ghost story. Once, there was this ghost and he lived in a haunted house. Only he did most of the haunting himself. This house was empty except for this ghost because nobody wanted to go near this house. They were so afraid of this ghost. And every night, this ghost would walk around this house and make all kinds of clunky, creaky sounds. A roomp, a roomp, like that. And he would go around looking for people to scare because that's what he liked most to do, scare people. And he was very scary to look at. Oh, was he scary to look at. Reggie stopped. Are you scared? He asked. Uh-huh, I said. Are you? What, said Reggie? Are you scared? Just a minute, said Reggie. I have to get something. What do you have to get? I asked. Oh, something, said Reggie. Reggie pulled the something out of a drawer. The room was dark, but I could see it had fuzzy arms and legs and was about the size of a teddy bear. I looked again. It was a teddy bear. Reggie got back into bed. Now about this ghost, he said. Is that your teddy bear, I asked. What, said Reggie? Is that your teddy bear? You mean this teddy bear? The one you're holding, I said. Uh-huh, Reggie answered. Do you sleep with him all the time? What, said Reggie? Do you sleep with him all the time? Uh-huh. Does your teddy bear have a name? Does your teddy bear have a name, I said louder. Uh-huh, Reggie answered. What is it? You won't laugh said Reggie. No, I won't laugh, I said. Promise? I promise. It's Foo-Foo. Did you say Foo-Foo? Uh-huh, said Reggie. Just a minute, I said. I have to go get something. What do you have to go get, Reggie asked. Oh, something, I answered. What does he need to go get? The next minute, I was ringing my own doorbell. The door opened. Ira, everyone said. So now we know that this character's name is Ira. What are you doing here? I changed my mind, I answered. You what? said my mother. You what? said my father. You what? said my sister. She was still up. I changed my mind, I said. I decided to take Tata. After all, I went upstairs. Soon. I was down again with Tata, my sister said. Reggie will laugh. You'll see how he'll laugh. He's just going to fall down laughing. He won't laugh, said my mother. He won't laugh, said my father. He won't laugh, I said. Why do you think Ira is so confident that his friend, Reggie, won't laugh. Does Reggie has, have his own teddy bear? Do you think Reggie's able to empathize with Ira? I came back to Reggie's room. I have a teddy bear too, I said. Do you want to know his name? I waited for Reggie to say, uh-huh. But Reggie didn't say uh-huh. Reggie didn't say anything. I looked at Reggie. He was fast asleep. Just like that, he had fallen asleep. Reggie, wake up, I said. You have to finish telling the ghost story. But Reggie just held his teddy bear closer and went right on sleeping. And after that, well, there wasn't anything to do after that. Good night, I whispered to Tata. And I fell asleep, too. Thank you so much for reading this story with me this evening. It's so special to be able to share stories with you that I loved when I was your age. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.